and welcome back to Mr. B's math class. Today we're going to look at 12.1, regular and irregular polygons. So with this lesson here, uh, it's a big chunk of it's a review from grade 7, as you did look at tessellations in grade 7. So um, it'll be a nice refresher for you to take a look at some things from last year. So let's begin. Uh, some key terms for today's lesson. Uh, if you remember from last year, a polygon. Well, a polygon is a plane figure with at least three straight sides and angles. So examples I've got for you there are things like your square here, a rectangle, a triangle with three straight sides, or even here, a pentagon. So all of these uh, items here are polygons because they have those three straight sides or we have our angles in between. Now when we take those ideas and we look at a tessellation, well a tessellation is simply a pattern that covers an area or plane without overlapping or leaving gaps. So if you look here at this example right at the bat, we can see we've got a bunch of squares all pieced together and they don't overlap one another or have gaps. So they are actually tiling patterns because it looks like you know tiles of your bathroom or whatever else. But they all fit together nicely with no overlap or gaps. Here we have some triangles. Again, all of them are together and you can see here, there are also no gaps or any overlapping. Uh, another example here with tessellation could be just some brick pattern where you've seen this outside probably on the ground, um, in a backyard, or on the street, or even on some walls. We've got this pattern of rectangles that, you know, they kind of repeat and there are no gaps at all or overlapping. So tessellations in our world. So before we get into the actual part of the lesson, let's just even think more about where do we see tessellations in our world? Well, you see them, like I mentioned, on brick walls and patterns like that, where we've got our rectangles together um, without gaps or overlapping. You think about our classroom or many other ceilings that have tiling. We have those suspended ceiling tiles that are all the same thing. They're all um, pieced together. They fit nicely without overlapping or gaps. Think about a honeycomb with bees. We've got those right there that are all beautiful, natural um, tessellations all together without overlapping or gaps. Here, just a kind of a more advanced kind of mosaic. Um, you might find this even on stained glass windows or other pieces of tapestry, where you here you've got squares um, and triangles that are forming this beautiful tapestry together, as you see here. Any other example of a more uh, real life one here? You can see the same idea with all many different shapes. It's rectangles, squares, uh, diamonds, or triangles. Um, so many different shapes in here that are all going together beautifully and leaving no gaps or overlapping. So that's what our tessellations in our world, and there's so many more you could find if you just look around your house or even out just walking on the street, you'd find these. So let's just take a look at some key terms. So the first one is tiling a plane. So a pattern that covers an area or plane without overlapping or leaving gaps, is tiling. So you think about just putting these pieces together, that's called tiling the plane. So an example here, when I put these squares together here, one, two, three, four, I was able to tile the plane because they fit together nicely and I could probably keep going and adding pieces here and just extending it as much as I'd like to is simply tiling the plane. Now, unfortunately, in the example that you see here that I've got, I can't tile the plane properly because I've got one, two, three of these pentagons that go together. But if I went to put that fourth one in, you can see either I would overlap it here or if I was to take that out, there'd be a massive gap. So unfortunately, I couldn't tile the plane here properly as those shapes didn't go together perfectly. Now, let's take a look at the same example here, um, but just talk about the, how these things go together. So if we look at regular and irregular polygons, tessellating the plane, well, that happens as long as the interior angles are going to measure 360 degrees. So for example here, we know with squares, well, they have right angles. We know that this is going to be 90 degrees, and that's going to be 90 degrees, and that's 90 degrees, and that's 90 degrees. Well, if you take all these angles here and add them together, well, 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, well, that equals 360 degrees. So we know, yep, that was perfect. We had not have any problems because all those angles matched up to equal 100, 360 degrees. You could do the same thing with triangles here in our tessellation. So if I was to take this chunk right here in the middle where they all meet again together, where all the interior angles meet, while we look at it, we've got an angle here, 
here, here, here, here, and here. Well, we know that in a triangle, these measurements here are 45 degrees. 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. That angle there is 45 degrees, and that angle there is 45 degrees. Well, if we add all of that together, or just say 45 degrees times, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six angles, guess what? That equals 360 degrees. So we know that, yep, that tessellates quite well because we know that we're going to have um, 360 degrees being the answer when all those angles in the interior equal that amount. Now, when we look at our last example of our pentagons, we can tell just by looking at it that it's not going to tile properly because it's not going to fit, but we could even double check this by using our math for our angles. Well, in a pentagon, the angle here is actually 96 degrees. That's that angle. And this one is 96 degrees. That's 96 degrees. Well, we know that if we have those three angles, there's not enough room there to have 96 degrees. Because if we were to take 96 degrees and multiply it by four, because we have our four uh, sides there, four angles, that gives us 384, meaning that there's too much. We're, we're too big for the gap. And we know that here because we can see that our fourth pentagon will not fit properly because all those angles will measure to equal that. So unfortunately, the four pentagons can't tessellate the plane properly because the interior angles cannot equal 360 degrees. They're too, uh, too big. Therefore, uh, they'll be overlapping and not fitting together nicely. So that's, again, how we know whether things are going to tessellate or not. A, if they fit together nicely, but B, the interior angles all need to equal 360 degrees. If not, they did not tessellate the plane.